capital letters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. The March 23rd, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Great to be with you. Absolutely great to be with you. Let's get to these uh, markets out here. Of course, I would love to hear from you. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Uh, inside that subject heading, if you would put radio show question, that would be great. And of course, in our Tiger's Den, any ping, will do so let's go ahead and get this show started on magical magnificent monday of course this is tiger financial news network i'm steve rhodes welcome to the show right now we got a mixed bag out here mixed from the standpoint that you've got the ndx 100 trading higher we'll take a look at what that actually means the semis are trading higher as well dow's off 279 s p is down 32 the russell's off 13 points new york stock exchange 204 wilshire 5000 one and a half percent 330 points the downside transports off one and a quarter percent as well spot volatility is interesting there it's trading down three dollars 21 cents 62.83 it's uh, trading below stevie's uh, green line. We'll take a look at that certainly during the uh, trading session. Uh, what I first want to do, there are a couple of questions that came in, so I want to get to those questions uh, first out here. The first one coming in from Michael P., who wanted to take a look at uh, Gilead. Uh, Gilead, he says, has a couple of different uh, drugs out there that might be used, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> in the uh, corona uh, virus, uh, 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 you know, shit that we're dealing with right now uh, but let's go take a look at uh, gilead out here so michael here are each of you that are watching us on tiger tv when we take a look so one of the things you and i are trying to do we're always trying to figure out where support and resistance is we're going to do that during the uh, day here during the during this hour so inside of gilead there's a brand new profile that formed today the top of the box 7735 the bottom is 6657 it's trading right around the center it's a relatively equally distributed box. Maybe the center is closer, to, maybe it is slightly closer to the top and the bottom out here. Um, so if you're looking for a buy point, uh, testing the bottom of that box and holding a support level would be an ideal place. I don't know whether price will get down there or not. It is tested and rejected. Well, it's close to rejecting that swing point from March the 16th that had 26 million. You're only 11 million shares. So it's pulling back today on light volume. And if price were to close above 7280 or 72.63, that actually could be the rejection to move higher. Now you got resistance at 77.35 on a weekly time frame. Price is above. Uh, it's it's just below the top of the weekly profile. That's 73.13. Hard for you to see, but 73.13 would be a nice area to clear. But we can't see the 75 level um, on a closing basis. That has been resistance for Gilead. It's been trading with inside that range for really quite a period of time since October of 2018 out there. Now, if we look at Gilead's other sets of tools and charts out here, what you're going to see, we'll just go backwards. Here's the quarterly time frame charts, because we're going to look at quarterly time frame charts today. We need to to take a look at uh, worst case or maybe next case situation with regard to the markets out here as far as where support might be. In the case of Gilead, Michael, uh, you really need to see this close above 78.67. If it can do that, then it should head back to the highs out there. That's what the quarterly time frame is telling us. The monthly time frame, let me update this, populate this, 88.85 is the level that price must uh, overcome. That is its TD9 count breakdown level. Now, we knew that many, many months ago out here. We can see that in the case of Gilead, let me get my cross here. <clears throat> 
And uh, you can see back in January of 2018, as this was making a nice run, it ran right in that resistance level. So for doing any kind of um, any kind of uh, risk reward calculation, you know, 88.85 is a real significant level for resistance. We can clearly see that out here on a weekly time frame. Is there anything else that uh, I can share with you? Hey, look, price above the uh, its last resistance level of 68.53. So pulling back and testing that is in essence been really a buy point. Price above Stevie's green line out there on the daily time frame. What do we have? We've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top that happened on Friday. A little shooting star price below Stevie's green line. So, Michael, here's what I'm going to suggest to you if you want to get into Gilead. As long as price remains below 7530, Stevie's green line, it might give you the opportunity to catch about the 6657 area or somewhere in between. So that's what I see when I take a look at the uh, multiple charts there for Gilead. G-I-L-D is the uh, ticker symbol. Jay asked a question, are there any new profiles setting up? And the answer is there aren't just yet. It did try earlier in the morning, um, and I rebooted my system just to make sure. The only new profile, Jay, and I think this was when I was with you last week, we had noticed that, and that's inside the NQ. And so the NQ's profile is 69.68 at the bottom, and uh, 71.26 at the center. Prices right now at 70.92, and 77.59 would be the high. So any close above 77.59, I'm not saying we're going to do that or it's going to do that, but if we were to see that, that would be a change in trend signal out there. With regard to profiles, let's take a look at what's going on profile wise. Here, luckily, because we use CB synthetic contract, it helps us to understand we can look at daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly. I've been able to get week yearly to. Uh, to work out just yet but right now you've got the ES mini it has tested the 2017 low that's 2255 and a quarter it's trading below the uh, bullish structured quarterly profile 2325 so this 2325 level is a real key area in my opinion on the ES mini uh, J price needs to get back above that because price is below all other profiles out there it's the only profile you and I can rely upon and if price continues to close below that I'm going to close below the 2017 low. Just an easy target would become the 2016 low, and that's in the 1787 area. The NQ is really going to be, well, it's not all about the NQ. It's going to be about all of these, but the NQ is the powerhouse out here. Now, we suggest that to you because when we take a look at its monthly profile, that would be the bottom left-hand panel, we can see that price is tested and so far rejected uh, the bottom of that bullish structured profile, 67.21. So 67.21 is a really important level, especially on a monthly basis. So we're at March the 23rd. We've got another week, so it'll be next week out there. Close below that would then open up the door inside the NQ to go to the center or the bottom of its quarterly profile, 56, 52, and 6,200, uh, 6,199 to be exact out there. If we look at the, uh, the Dow equity future contract, what it has done so far, this is a slight positive, it has tested and rejected the bottom of its quarterly profile. Again, that is the bottom right, and that level is 18,161, bullish in structure as well. So if you're asking, has the market found support? bottom support, whatever terminology you want to use out there. The only two so far that are giving us that signal from a profile standpoint, it's the quarterly profile for the Dow, it's the, it's the monthly profile for the NQ, and the ES, we really need it, or it needs to get above that 2325 level, and then what we could say would be, okay, some support areas have held. And those are from the profiles. And Ruby asks, is there a bearish death cross on the ES and the Dow charts, as many financial channels are saying? Ruby, I don't know. We can go figure that out. If there is, death crosses usually identify very closely, very close to an actual bottom in the market. Why do they call it the death cross then? We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. 
Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so, uh, and I mentioned, uh, so Ruby, I was just reading a comment that was posted in the Tiger's Den from one of our denners, Ruby, who had asked about the uh, Death Cross out there. So the Death Cross, uh, here's the Dow that we're taking a look at. The Death Cross uh, is when the 50-day, so here I like to use exponential moving averages, but I believe for the crosses, these Death Cross and the Golden Cross, they're using the simple uh, moving average. And the green line is the 50-day, so I'll use green as the faster, the red line is the 200 day. And uh, so, Ruby, I want, um, many, many years ago, uh, once I started developing some of my own software tools out there and doing back testing, I went ahead and back tested the Dow. Remember, I've got the Dow data going back to 1896. And so I was able to test if you went long uh, when you had a golden cross and you went short when you had a, uh, a death cross. And those were, and I tried at multiple different um, places for exiting and so forth. But what I found, what was interesting out here, and it's not all the time. I still haven't found the all the time tool out there. Keep searching for it. But uh, if we just simply go back, and for example, last time that we had the so-called death cross, looked like it was on uh, December the uh, 20th. Remember, I'd, I'd mentioned when we get that death cross, typically what that means is we're closer to the beginning of the end than... The beginning of the the beginning of the end of the move, just to make sure that what I what I'm saying out there, then we are to the beginning of the beginning of a move lower. Does that make any sense? I, look, folks, I'm under self quarantine for really good reasons. I have a, a number of the symptoms that are out there. So, and I've got my microphone six feet away from me. So you should be in uh, pretty good shape out there. But uh, one of those one of those unfortunate um, uh, conditions is. Uh, is um, 
see, I can't even remember the, the name, is confusion out there. And so I am, I'm certainly confused at times out here. But again, if you take a look at that most recent death cross that we were dealing with, Ruby, it occurred on December 20th. That's what it looks like to me. And then it was two days later when we actually saw that bottom. That's in December of 2018 out there. Um, the prior death cross for that from that would have been back here during the uh, this looks like this this one occurred around November January 15 2016 and the bottom came in two days later two days later so look I'm not sitting here and, and there was another death cross uh, this occurred back here it looks like around August 12th 2015 now that took about a week about a week before the bottom came in so that whole death cross situation out there uh, the, the reality is if people are telling you that, so they use a name like that, and obviously it, it just adds to the fear and anxiety that all of us or many of us have out there, uh, and yet they really don't want to really go back and, I don't think they do, I don't know because I didn't listen to it, but most people, you know, they, 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 they suggest it as an ominous thing. Um, go do the work yourself, go study this yourself. And you'll find maybe a couple ominous time periods out there. But for the majority of the cases, you go back to 1865, 95, what I remember out there, you'll, you'll come to that conclusion that, that really I just shared with you here. I'm not, I'm not cherry picking or anything like that. I, I know we can go back and try to find one where, where the, the bottom came in much later. And so we can absolutely do that. And it's really all about trying to identify support and resistance out there. So maybe that will bleed into this next question here uh, since we got to Michael's. And this one comes in from uh, Ray. And Ray says, any idea where the bottom is? 16,000 for the Dow or lower? Well, da, 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 da. So Ray, um, what we can do is try to identify key levels of, of support out here, resistance, things of that sort. Right now, we're really taking a look at support. So um, so here, some, a factor I didn't even realize because I wasn't aware of the uh, death cross. So thank you, Ruby, for that, because that could mean that we're closer to the beginning of the end or at least some type of counter trend rally than we're at the beginning of the nail in the coffin, so to speak, out there. One of the things that I'll be watching for out here, Ray, in uh, we looked at this last week, uh, Thursday, Wednesday, and what have you. A, a real key level, in my opinion, a real key level for the Dow to close back above. For, first, by the way, the chart that we're looking at here, this is a logarithmic chart pattern. Substantially different than the linear chart. For example, I'll just switch it to a linear chart out there, you know, and it's so substantially different in the way that it uh, works out here with regard to the uh, numbers. But so it's a log scale that I believe is really important. And this log scale, this first diagonal yellow line, that is uh, that is the exact same. Well, here, let us the exact same angular line where the 1987, here's the 87 uh, bear market. Here's the 87 crash. And we're certainly in some type of crash mode here, complete liquidation event. Uh, but that line, that logarithmic uh, trend line, was established from back in 1929 to the highs of 1966. And what we can see here, Ray, is that price did, you know, initially, this is a quarterly chart that we're looking at. The only way I can scrunch the data so you and I can take a look at it on the screen is, is by going to a quarterly time frame. And so price did move below that level. But at the end of the quarter, now the end of our quarter is not till June 30th out there, um, would, there was a close above that. And Jay had asked me a question earlier. Jay asked the question, when, how long do you think it'll take to get to the new all-time highs? So if you take a look at the end, if we use 87 as a template, Jay, I don't want you to think that I pulled that number, which was 24 months out of my arse out of here. If you just simply use the 87 as a benchmark, what you'll do is you get back to the all-time highs. It took 24 months. So where the 24 months come from, it really came from that. Will that come to fruition or not? I don't know. But um, it's as good of a guide as I have. Um, right now. It's as good of a guide as I have right now. So we'll watch, Ray, the 19677 level. But you had asked a more, que a more important question, which was, hey, where's the bottom out here? So for that, where am I going to go to for those charts out here? Um, do, 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 do it. I think what we'll do is we'll come over here. And so this was that Gilead chart. So let me populate this. You were specifically asking about the Dow. So I'm going to punch that in first. Oh, Jones, that's still average out here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the larger time frame. And the larger time frame says if what you and I just looked at 
wasn't the bottom. Uh, and here is a quarterly time frame chart for the Dow. Forms wave number seven, forms a road's momentum indicator topping candle by far. And so its next level of support would be 17063. Now we'll go take a look at the monthly, weekly, and so forth. But 17063 would be the next downside target. And then below that, I would have to say would be the 15370 area. 15370, that's the line I've drawn in here. The red lines are automated because it's based upon trying to identify some breakout levels on a quarterly basis using the TD9 pattern. So the 15370 level would be the lows of 2015 out here. So, uh, um, 16,000, first 17,063 would be a number that we would be paying attention to. On a monthly basis, you'll see here when we populate it, um, the concern is that the month is not over. So a week from today, is it today or tomorrow? I don't know. Somebody figure out when the end of the, uh, the, end of the month is. If at the end of the month, the Dow were to close below 19,677.94, that would be problematic. Uh, because that is its monthly breakout level. Why is that problematic? We well, just go take a look at the 2007 top. Once price closed, blow it on a monthly basis, June 2008. Price went down to the next level, and then to the next level, and to another level that we take a look on a quarterly basis. So this 196, and you see on a monthly basis, 17063 was also a breakout level. So that's a real key area, 17063, Ray. Thanks so much for writing. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
welcome back, uh, folks. So the uh, excuse me, the next question coming in from uh, Eddie, and it's about gold. And Eddie's question is, you know, is gold poised to uh, to uh, take off substantially higher? So it's had a heck of a move so far. It's up eighty one dollars. Now um, the chart that I'm going to put up here. Uh, for you to take a look at, Eddie, this is using uh, my advanced uh, super Doppler market profile tool. And uh, so I don't know if these are actually going to stick come day's end or not. What I can share with you, this was a bullish structured profile. Give me a moment here to turn off price. And again, I don't know for sure whether this is going to stick or not, but we're going to use the numbers that we've got today. So it's bullish in structure because the bottom of the bar, the center of the box at 1510 is much is closer to the bottom than it is to the top. And typically, then when price would get above the center level, that was 1510, it would signal that it should make its way all the way up to resistance. That would be the top of the box. So util utilizing this tool here, this is suggesting that the sellers are sitting at the 1571 level. Now, I don't know who's going to whether sellers or buyers are going to win this battle. Uh, the move higher may be over for the uh, day. You're certainly watching, or you'll want to be watching at 1571 level and again tomorrow I, this profile might not, might not exist and I'll have to come back and take a look at what data we have but right now price is heading up towards a resistance in that 1571 level another area of resistance that's being tested on the daily time frame out here Eddie is Stevie's red line so and that's price at 1554. So what we do know is 1471.20 is a real key level of support. That's the TD9 count breakout levels. That level was tested and is held, even held as uh, recently as a Friday's uh, action out here. But if price can stay above Stevie's green line at 1555, and if price can clear the top of that new profile at 1571, its message would suggest to you that gold is going to move higher. Whereas if it closes back below these areas, even though I know it's already trading below the top of that daily profile, so you'll really want to focus on Stevie's green line, then that would suggest that, um, okay, maybe trading in a range, may head lower, uh, maybe a top, um, any one of those uh, factors. If we look at the weekly time frame chart for gold, last week what price did after creating, after forming that Rhodes momentum indicator top was price went all the way back to support and support is held. And that's the 1465.50 area. The weekly time frame is suggesting that price would go ahead and bounce up to the 1588 area. Um, so, so that's an area to also watch. And on the uh, so that looks bullish, or at least support is held. And if I take a look at the uh, monthly time frame out here. Uh, what we can see is price pulled back, tested and rejected Stevie's green line. So here I'll summarize it for you. It does look like gold wants to head higher. And what you'll be watching right now is going to be that 1571 area. And that will really give you a clue. So I hope that that helps you out and best of luck with uh, with your uh, transactions out there. Uh, Jerry writes in and uh, says, uh, can, I sh can I show my uh, tools for ticker symbol KR? So let's go take a look at uh, KR, see what that is. And let's uh, first go ahead and get that going here on one system and on the other one, the uh, three time frame charts out here. So we've got KR is the uh, ticker symbol. Kroger. Okay. So Kroger's got a new profile out here. So the question is, just so you please show the process, is it a trading buy? So you've got a new profile, new daily profile out here. Jerry and uh, prices is above, it's a bullish in structure price is above the center 3083 and as long as price were to stay above 2911 that's the bottom of the box um, then it looks okay we're going to see if there was some other topping signal out there that we should be paying attention to uh, re resistance here is going to be your 3512 area price is above the top of the weekly and it's above the top of the monthly so when you're above uh, we uh, any profiles for the specific time frame it says you're trading above where resistance is or where the sellers were located so now let's go back to our other chart see what we can see here for Jerry with regard to uh, Kroger let's come back and start with the daily time frame let me get this populated here so on a daily time frame uh, populate um, price was moving higher doing less relative energy but no bearish reversal candle not 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 very pretty candles over the last two days and price is trading below Stevie's green line so if it's trading below the green line level that's 32 32 it's suggesting that it could pull back even further Jerry if we're if it closes back above that today then you've got a bullish test 
um, similar to the bullish test that you had about four trading sessions ago. Trading When line is green and you close below it, it says there may be a further retracement. And what you and I know is that further retracement, therefore, that could then take price down to the bottom of its daily profile between the bottom and the center, 29.11 to 30.83. Now let's go take a look at the weekly time frame for you. <clears throat> and see where it is. And in a weekly time frame chart, let's populate this. It's got a potential wave number seven, but price is still above Stevie's green line, which is 29.89. And uh, still still looks bearish, I'm um, still looks bullish to me by, by being able to trade above that level. Let's look at the monthly time frame chart. In the monthly time frame chart, the beauty here is if it can close above 30.40, that's its TD nine count resistance level. And this means at the end of or next week, whether it's Monday or Tuesday, when the actual month closes out here, if it closes above 3040, that would suggest that it uh, may want to make a run for its back to its all time highs out there. So that's what I see in Kroger daily, weekly, monthly. See if there's anything here on the quarterly. The quarterly it's trading above Stevie's green line. So I'd summarize it like this. Um, because of the daily time frame and the price is still trading below Stevie's green line, 3232. If you're looking to buy Kroger, I'd say it's somewhere between 2911 and 3083 out there. And I hope that that uh, helps you out. Next question that is coming in. This is from Husky Oil Chart, H U S K F. H U S K F is the uh, ticker symbol. Um, Husky Energy. Just just really asking for an analysis, not anything else other than that. H-U-S-K-F on my other system out here. So trading below the bottom of the daily, below the bottom of the weekly, below the bottom of the monthly. So in essence, these charts really here aren't going to be able to uh, help us out. I don't have a name uh, to go with the uh, email request, so my apologies there. Uh, we'll just say M-A. And uh, so, so what... Husky Oil did on Friday was it generated really several patterns. It was a TD nine count bottom. It was a bar after nine. I apologize. On Thursday, it was a it was the bar after bar number nine. So you've got the TD nine count pattern. Prices moving lower, doing less relative energy. And on Friday, you had a bullish engulfing candle. And that MA is a signal of a bottom. Now, the beauty on this chart here is price is now trading above Stevie's red line. And that's really important. That would suggest that price could be headed up to 450. It's trading right now at 220. Ideally, you'll like to see two days above the uh, 202 level. Now, that's going to change by a penny or two as price moves out here. But this has given you a nice bottoming signal on the daily time frame out there. Very few charts can we find price trading above Stevie's oscillator unchanged line out here. On the weekly time frame chart, the patterns you have, a TD9 count, potential bottom, and wave number seven. That's letter G on my chart out there. So those are bottoming signals. Price has to close above 448 for us to be able to call a bottom there. And I don't have anything really on the monthly. So, MA, I hope that helps you out with regard to ticker symbol H-U-S-K-F. Ooh, Stevie's out of it. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, welcome, welcome back, folks. Uh, so Tim wants me to go ahead and take a look at the uh, NASDAQ 100, the uh, Qs, the uh, NQ out here. I'm going to focus in on the Qs, Tim, if that's okay with you. Um, so let's take a look at, first I'll pull over this chart here. And, uh, and so as we take a look at it, let me share with you, you know, what has transpired so far. So last night the market opens up. Uh, by the way, the black horizontal lines on the screen, they represent the opening range uh, on a 30-minute basis. So it's really just taking like the high and low of the open out here. Let me get my cursor. It makes it a little bit easier for us. And uh, what's really interesting about the opening range out here is price went to limit down within the first five minutes of the open. And then around 8 o'clock or so, uh, price started coming off of the bottom and really just got up to the top of that opening range. It didn't close above the top of that range until about 7 o'clock this morning. And then we had the uh, Treasury – no, it was a tre the, the Fed – I think the Fed came out with more bazooka, more of its bazooka out here, and we saw that big wide-ranging bar. Price hasn't been able to get up there. Now, what did happen is price pulled back at about noon. Was it noon? Yeah, about noon, and retested. That that was a resistance line. Old resistance can become new support out here. So uh, the, what you don't want to see on any kind of a pullback is a close below 67.98. If we see that, that's below the top of the opening range, and chances would be that price would go explore the bottom of that range, which is 66.2875. So that's kind of the ultra, uh, short, it's, I guess that's not the shortest term time frame that you and I can look at, but that would be an area that I would be uh, watching to give you clues as to what its intent is. If we take a look at the um, other time frames, if we take a look at the daily time frame here for the NQ, um, so look at Friday. Tim, on Friday, um, the market had, and I apologize because on Friday my head was glued to the uh, bed, glued to the pillow, so to speak. So it wasn't really until Saturday sometime when I could come actually kind of peek at the charts and see what was going on. And uh, this just uh, is going to uh, help each of us understand just how important Stevie's red line is, red green line out here. That's the oscillator and change line, which if you want to learn how to use it, you should learn how to use it. Just go subscribe to Mastering Probability for, you know, the next 29 days and you get access to a bunch of education 
uh, at no cost to you. So uh, in take advantage of it, especially while you're at home. No better time than really right now. Now, if you take a look at uh, what, what occurred on Friday, as price got up, it, it tried to get above that level. But by the end of the day, it closed well below that. And that's really going to be the key. Everybody's saying, you know, is there, or not everybody's saying, but the question is, is there a bottom out here? Now, right now, we're, when we're in this uh, liquidation phase, global liquidation phase out here, um, the this is not going to be about trying to buy the bottom tick out here. Um, it, like if you're intraday trading, you're looking for areas of support and other things to be tested. But from a, a, a turn won't occur, a, a, a bottom won't be confirmed until we see a close above Stevie's red line. Then we need to see two days of closes above that area. Right now it's printing at 73.65. Friday was a great example of a test and rejection of that area. The weekly time frame chart does offer some hope. It offers some hope. So the breakout levels, and those are the red horizontal lines on my screen out here. The breakout levels are kind of like, uh, I think of them as a elevator going up and down. Floors. And when you close below one floor, for example, excuse me, <clears throat> when you close below 85, 20, 50, inside the NQ on a weekly basis, as it did a couple of weeks ago, price will go down to explore the next level. That next level was 78, 22, 25. Price closed just below that a couple of weeks ago, goes down to the next level, which is 66, 12, 50. I know somebody's going to ask the question, what's the next level before uh, below that on a weekly time frame? And if you weren't going to ask it, I guess I'm just talking to myself here. Give me a second here to go find that tool. Where is it? Um, is that it? No, that's not it. Is that it? Um, no, that's not it. No, you're saying, hey, Steve, would you get to that tool already out there? Oh, boy. Wow. What's the deal here? Um, oh, here we go. Okay, great. Thank you. So, sorry about that, folks. Told you confusion. Um, so you can see in this 64.42, 65.98, 66.12. So each of these, one at a time, become those next levels. But at this stage here on a weekly basis, uh, price has held uh, its level of support. If price does go lower out here inside the NQ on a monthly time frame, the level that you would be watching would be 63.55. And on a quarterly basis, I, I hesitate to show this to you, but it is what it is. That would be 43.88 out there. So from an intraday perspective inside the queues, here's what you need to know. Um, maybe that's not what you need to know. Give me a second here. Uh, just give me a moment here, folks, to... So inside the queues... I apologize. I'm just looking for something here that would be worthwhile for me to share with. They don't have anything really on the 30-minute time frame chart. So on the 60-minute time frame chart, on a closing basis, old support, which was 71.93.50, has become new resistance. We saw that spike up, try to get above that area, really tried to get up to the 73.80 uh, level, wasn't able to do that. And so I'd be watching 71.93.50 to the upside and 73.80 as well on the upside. Any close above that would be hopeful. Any close below 67.80.30 would, would not be uh, helpful. So I don't want to confuse you. Um, just looking for, you know, any kind of signals that would be helpful to us in trying to uh, determine what the message of the markets is out here. Uh, ten minute chart. What do we got here? Really, not much. So there's there's not much more that I that I have for you, Tim. Is it is it trying to form a bottom? The easiest way that we can say that is just simply the mere fact that when we came back, we took a look at those TAS market profiles, and we could see that that 67.2105 area, the bottom of its a monthly profile is support. And I would say if we see a close below that, even on a daily time frame chart. That would not be good. That would not be bullish. And we could be looking at one of those other support areas or even 6200, 6199, the center of that uh, quarterly profile uh, to be tested. But look at the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, New York Stock Exchange, we still have rising bottoms in advanced decline oscillator reading out here. If I look at, oh, the spot VIX index, right? Where did I put that chart? No, oh, here's one. So this is this is kind of interesting here. So the spot fix index, it doesn't show it here, 
but uh, it does have the, um, I just don't show the the names of the candles. Here, here's what I really want to share with you about the spot volatility index. This is the most important thing, is that on Friday, price actually closed below Stevie's green line. Remember, we were looking at a stock symbol, might have been Gilead or Kroger, I don't recall, maybe it was both. And so the green line, um, and when you close below a green line, it says that there's more of a further retracement. So the spot volatility index is suggesting to us, of course, it'll be the end of the day reading, that, that it wants to continue to pull back. And if it wants to continue to pull back, and that's its signal, it's really suggesting that uh, the S&P should continue to move higher, move higher to where, move lower to where. Well, in the case of the spot volatility index, the number I would target to the downside, the next level, would be 5133. I close below 5133, 3738. That would be the 50-day exponential moving average out there. So that's a small little positive, Tim, for you. I would imagine this vote in the Senate, if they screw this one up again a second time, we go we go explore those lows. Steve Steve Rhodes at TFNM. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, a couple of questions coming in. One from Dennis. Uh, he says, could you take a look at OLED? Looks like there was a good test at the 105.30 area today and bounced off that. Looking for an entry point to get back into it. So when we take a look at OLED... Um, here are its uh, charts uh, with its uh, market profiles out there. So I'm going to punch that up. A new market profile resistance, 2149 support, 1531. But here's really, I'm going to really simplify this for you. 
Uh, Dennis, now, you know, if you're trying to buy the bottom tick or what have you, it's got a TD nine count bottom. It has roads momentum indicator bottom. Um, it did that on uh, Thursday and Friday, but what it hasn't done today, and it was a nice move, but if you take a look at where it ran into problems, it was at Stevie's red line. 124.51 is the current print. I would say, Dennis, before you were to take a long position, does it have a bottoming pattern? Absolutely. But if you want to really try to get a good confirmation, I believe that does, I believe that price needs to close above its OUL. It's oscillator and change line 124.51. That would get you up to the 158.86 level. Buying it before then just hasn't proven itself to you. And I'd like you to have proof in the pudding. On a weekly basis, you've got a TD nine count bottom potential. So that's good. Remember, uh, that, that pattern can bottom on bars number nine or the fo bar following nine. That could be next week as well. The monthly time frame, 102.74, would be a key level of support. So, Dennis, I hope that that helps you out. The last question coming in from Dan, sticking with food stores, can we go take a look at GO as the ticker symbol? So let's go do that while we have about 20 seconds or so, see if we can get this thing to populate for us and load up. Come on, please do that. Uh, folks, I'll do my best to be with you tomorrow and the uh, next day. For me right now, the issue with this virus is, this is the most talking that I've done, um, is the uh, shortness of breath. And uh, it's uh, I'm definitely short of breath in, in the talking. So we'll just see how it goes tomorrow out here. Uh, with regard to GO, below Stevie's red line, below support at $31 on a daily basis out here. Um, so I don't really see it. There's not enough data on the uh, weekly time frame. So, folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay uh, safe out there. And I look forward to seeing you on uh, Terrific Tuesday. And stay tuned. A couple great hours are left. Take care. Bye-bye.